Hi, it's Kernetex here with a series of videos all about installing Gen 2 on a Raspberry Pi 400. Um, as with my previous videos about uh, installing Linux on Raspberry Pis, um, it will probably work on earlier Raspberry Pis with some adjustment, but I'm specifically targeting the Raspberry Pi 400 because it's um, basically the fast machine, fastest of the Raspberry Pis that's out at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do is a little bit different also. I'm showing currently the desktop of the Raspberry Pi that I've been experimenting on. So um, if I do LSCPU, you can see that the architecture is 64-bit ARM architecture. The support for 32-bit binaries because uh, there's four cores etc and there's the Cortex A72 showing that it's the Raspberry Pi uh, 400 specifically. Um, another thing I overclocked the Raspberry Pi um, I built my own kernel when I started out um, and changed some settings to overclock it as I've read that the Raspberry Pi 400 is reliable um, up to two gigahertz um, overclocking it from 1.8 gigahertz and I compiled everything that you can see on the screen uh, complete gen 2 with some rebuilds um, KDE office LibreOffice Thunderbird and Firefox all overclocked at 2 gigahertz with um, without a hitch the the only problem I encountered which I didn't really look into was with chromium um, it kept on failing. I don't think it was a memory issue. Um, so I didn't really look too far into it because I could see it was going to take a long time. As it was with KDE um, building Falcon, that needs Qt Web Engine, and that was a massive build in itself and did take, um, I think, a couple of days in the end. Um, it needs a lot of memory. Some of the threads that are building need we well they were using two and a half gigabytes um, so obviously if you've got two threads running you're going to be thrashing the swap swap space and that's probably not a good idea so because it was single core build it, it did take a long time um, Firefox built in a reasonable time I think it was approximately eight hours so that's quite reasonable so if you did want to use a Raspberry Pi seriously with a red web browser I would recommend Firefox and I wouldn't recommend uh, Chromium and I'd say that that would probably take a great deal of time if it did finish probably two or three days and certainly not Falcon because of um, the Qt web engine requirement um, and therefore anything else that needed that um, I'll try and avoid unless you're prepared to wait for that time of course uh, for that package to build but yeah, apart from that, there's no problems with the server overclocking to 2000, so it's just a stock um, Raspberry Pi 400, no modifications whatsoever. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's currently running at 2000, and um, yeah, it was, it was uh, very, very reliable. And you can see other features there with the vulnerabilities and so on. Um, so that's that. The other things I've got working are the Wi-Fi is available. Although I haven't enabled it, you can see there's a an adapter there ready to use. So it just needs obviously configuration. Um, so that was fairly straightforward to configure. The Bluetooth I had a little bit of trouble on. The, the trouble I found when I was experimenting with this was that there's a lot of information about getting 64-bit but a lot of it's based around the Raspberry Pi 3 when the um, possibility of 64-bit uh, Linux became a reality and obviously things are quite new there, people were experimenting a lot so I found that there's a lot of stuff out of date uh, a lot of stuff you don't need to do now that maybe you might have had to have done back then um, probably I think it was around I think it was 2015, 2016 when the Raspberry Pi three came out so it's like five years or so ago um, but with the Raspberry Pi 400 um, it's it's quite a straightforward thing to do there's still one or two things you have to bear in mind and take care of doing but um, yeah it's quite 
quite straightforward. But as I say, I had trouble getting the Bluetooth working, getting the correct drivers and so on. Um, but eventually I did get it working. As you can see, there's a Bluetooth symbol down there. Um, I have actually used it. It is, it is working. Um, so if I click on that, you can see there's a, a device there on the scan list. You can see it's scanning. Um, so if I do Bluetooth control, um, yeah, it's got the discovery on. Uh, I can do show so that you can see the uh, all the information. I mean, these don't mean a lot to me, but you can see all the capabilities that the uh, Bluetooth's got and so on, how it's advertising itself. So that's that's all working. When you run Bluetooth control, if the Bluetooth hardware's not working, it just won't do anything. You won't get any of this up. It's quite silent. So um, that's all good. Uh, the other thing I spent a bit of time on trying to get working was the hardware acceleration. Um, that turned out, I, I didn't explicitly find this written down anywhere, um, but it turned out to be setting in the make.conf um, everywhere I read that you needed to set this VC4 um, it turned which it kind of enabled it um, it was still sort of software based but the thing that did it was this V3D so the combination of those two gives you the acceleration and with GLX gears um, without the V3D I was getting approximately 50% CPU usage um, and with that, with with the V3D, um, it's down to about 15-20%. Um, if I run it, I can show that. So there it is running. You can see there's a spike there in the load usage as it's loaded. And you can see it's just these processors are just running a little bit higher. They're just below the 20% usage. So you can see it's quite minimal. Um, in fact, if you bear that in mind, I, when I boot into the actual Raspberry Pi operating system, when I start building Gen 2, I'll, I'll rerun the GLX gears there and you can see the difference. Um, okay, I know some things are slightly different. The Raspberry Pi operating system is 32-bit, it's not, over, or it won't be overclocked. Um, but those don't account for the vast difference in speed um, improvement that you see here with the hardware. Um, in fact, if I scroll back here, um, you can see it's got the V3D renderer rather than, I think, I think it lies to say software, is it? Or LLVM pipe is the other one, which is kind of apparently is a halfway shop to full hardware rendering. Um, um, yeah, another thing to work, worth mentioning here, if I full screen this, um, you do get to see the Raspberry Pi's uh, lack of power. So even though this is overclocked to 2 gigahertz, um, you, I don't know if this will show up, but it, it is slightly jittery there. The cogs are not turning as smooth. And also if I go back, you can see the frames per second has dropped to 40 frames per second from the maximum of 60. That's still a lot farther, faster than the the stock 32-bit Raspberry Pi operating system when I run GLX gears in that full screen the frames per second drops to about 30 so that's quite reasonable um, given that the Raspberry Pi Foundation aren't, haven't produced an official 64-bit kernel yet or maybe I should put that a better way then they don't provide any operating system that defaults to 64-bit it's only 32-bit and you have to manually select 64-bit kernel um, that's that's quite reasonable being this is on a well it's not on the stock kernel it's on the Raspberry Pi kernel but all the other software stock apart from the binary blobs uh, so that's, that's quite good um, uh, all things considering so let me just stop that and if I run GLX info is it minus B? You'll see there it actually says that it's uh, accelerated. The only thing I'm not sure about is it's sharing the, all of the memory with the processor. Um, so whether that can be reduced or not. Now with the stock Raspberry Pi image there is an option you can set in the command 
no, sorry, the config.txt on the um, boot partition. But from what I've read, that only affects um, like a uh, like the Raspberry Pi sort of um, way it's been built. So as I say, most most of what you can see is just stock, you know, default vanilla programs that have been compiled using the Gen 2 system. So it could be why that's so high. Um, if I become root, I'll just check. Um, I think there's a setting somewhere here. You can see where I've overclocked it there. Set that to 2000. Well, maybe the setting's not in here by default then. Yeah, um, also I think I'm pretty sure it's something that um, uh, wouldn't work if I did change the setting. In fact, come to think of it, there's another thing I remember reading now that the um, memory function is not advisable to set it for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400 because the graphics subsystem works in a different way from the Pi 3. Um, and maybe the fact that the whole memory is shared is one aspect of that so um, that could be why that's happened but as you can see it's uh, per perfectly usable as I say I've you know this is KDE a full KDE, KDE build um, I'll show you the Firefox loading uh, another thing worth mentioning is this is all running off of an external hard drive via the USB port so you can see it um, it's quite Quite nippy, a lot certainly a lot nippier than if it was off of a um, off of the SD card. I wouldn't recommend building that; it would make it quite agonising to use. But yeah, you can see it's uh, it pops up quite quickly. Uh, there's no hanging around; it's quite sluggish. Dragging things around, you can see it jitter a little bit, but that's just a limitation of the Pi itself. It's nothing to do with Gen 2. It's still very usable system. Um, I'll show you some of the other things here. Uh, Office. Well, you can see all the LibreOffice is installed there. So if I just load up the word processor. Obviously, given this is a, f a, a fresh load of LibreOffice, and it does tend to be slower the first time around. That's not that's not a bad load. So if I was to close that down now, and so load one of the other offices, Office tools, we'll see that it loads up a little bit quicker. There you go. See, so it's pretty nippy the second time around, as as it is normally, but. Um, it's more important to show that being as the Raspberry Pi is a, a lot slower than a, than an ordinary PC. Um, what else can I show? I've got yeah, there's Falcon. Like I say, uh, I would avoid installing this um, if you can help it, unless you particularly want it. But you can see that's loaded fine. Um, I'm not sure where it is, but I've put Thunderbird on here as well. Again, it's taking a little bit of time to load up fresh, but yeah, you can see it's it's loaded there. That's fine. And there it is. So obviously I haven't configured it, but so it wouldn't look as it would do normally. But you can see it's it's definitely Thunderbird that's loaded. Um, I haven't loaded much else on. I just wanted to get a feel for how the Raspberry Pi was with. Uh, natively compiled binaries and them, but uh, quite quite pleasantly surprised. Like I say, it's just the big packages that are going to be a problem. 
Um, there are binary images available of things like Gen 2, uh, sorry, of uh, Chromium um, and Firefox and probably LibreOffice as well. So if you, if you don't want to bother hanging around for those to be built, then um, there are those. But as I say, Firefox was, I thought, quite a reasonable eight hours or so, as I remember. Um, so, you know, that could be something you could leave running overnight. You could mask it out, say, with package.mask update the rest of the system and then just unmask the um, Firefox by you know putting a remark in the mask packet uh, file or, or deleting the line where you've masked it out and then just uh, leave it to run overnight and it'll be ready in the morning so that's that's an option um, yeah like I said I didn't install things like GIMP or anything like that so they're not on here to show, but certainly there's a little paint editor that comes with KDE. Um, graphics. Uh, there's Gwen View, the, pack, the viewer package that comes with KDE. So you can see they're, they're loading up and, you know, without any hesitation, really. Um, uh, games. Yeah, I've put all the games on here, so let's load one up. Let's do the old card games. Patience. So there you can see that that was nice and smooth. These card card movements, so obviously smaller graphical objects it can uh, quite, cope quite well with. So that's obviously okay. Um, I don't think there's much else to show you here now. The reason why I'm showing this all up front is because I won't be showing the actual building of a complete system on Gen 2 because once the Gen 2 system has been built, which is what the videos are about, um, extending the system as you see fit, you know, how you want to extend it is no different to any other Gen 2 system. It's just the initial getting the system up and running is the bit that's a little bit different. And, you know, the, like I say, the problems with the graphic acceleration, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth were the real problems for me. Um, but once that's all sorted, yeah, like I say, you just do the normal commands you would do to merge packages that you want installed. Bear in mind that um, there aren't e-builds for every package for the ARM architecture, so you will come across certain packages um, where there are no e-builds. So, for example, I tried to load up Wesnoth. So if I try that now, and you'll see the message that comes up, In fact, while that's running, um, it probably be quicker to check using uh, eQuery, which is part of the Gen Toolkit package, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, eQuery White, Wesnoth, and that will show you the different versions available for Wesnoth and you can see that for ARM64 which is this column here there are no versions available there's no e-builds as it is there's only um, like uh, untested versions on AMD64, PPC, PPC64 and x86 so it's already quite limited um, and if I go back here you can see it's this is the message you'll get if you try to merge something with no um, e-build um, and it says it's masked by a missing keyword, but it doesn't tell you what the missing keyword is. Now, um, some other packages aren't stable. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Let's try GIMP. They aren't stable for the ARM architecture, so they might be stable for x86. Uh, yeah, it looks like GIMP is. Um, but what you'll get there is you'll get a message saying it will list all the different versions and then it will say masked by squiggle ARM64 missing keyword and all you need to do then is to edit um, the portage uh, package dot accepted keywords file and you can see there's all these that I've had to add, add here to get things installed so as you can see LibreOffice is currently considered unstable um, I got that message that you just saw previously saying it's been masked by this keyword so all I did was just add the version and the keyword here 
the same with the localization and that allowed me to build it now admittedly I've not used it in angle but it compiles successfully that you know just loading it up and having a little play around and it's worked fine so but you you will have to expect problems if, if it's not been marked as stable um, and you can see most packages most of these big packages are but generally the smaller packages there doesn't seem to be any problems and it just tends to be the higher um, higher level packages where there are um, these unstable flags that need to be reset or, or need to be set um, yeah so that's more or less it the only other thing I will show is let me just log out of this is I also put XFCE on here that didn't take too long to build um, I can't remember exactly how long but you know, maybe a couple of hours or so it wasn't um, too big too big a build so uh, obviously KDE is a real heavyweight desktop environment um, I haven't tried GNOME but I imagine it's going to be something similar but yeah KDE is obviously a lot lighter it does feel a lot lighter when you're using it So you'll see it loads a lot quicker as well. And there you are, there's the desktop straight away. And there you go, there's all the usual stuff. So it looks like Firefox has installed itself as the default browser there. Um, got here is this explorer application finder there's explorer type thing there Thunar I believe it's called in XFCE and there's a terminal there as well so you can see it's a little bit more sprightly than KD so it might be a better option or something like LXDE maybe whatever your preferences or one of the other lightweight um, window managers um, so yeah that's it so in the next video what I'll be doing is I'll be starting the actual build but this was just a little introduction to show you what I've achieved with it and what is what is possible um, to do on the Raspberry Pi 400 with Gen 2 so thanks for watching and um, if you've liked the video please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel uh, if you want to hear about more of my videos and I'll see you in the next video